Welcome, everybody. I'm Anna Kinsman, Director of Marketing at AdviseCon, and I'm super glad you're with us today. For those of you who are not aware of AdviseCon, let me tell you a little bit about what we do. We are a passionate team of people that are in, have been in the project and uh, portfolio management space for a little over 20 years now. Uh, we really believe that a blend of methodology and tools are uh, the right combination for getting the best project outcome. So we're here to uh, attempt to meet your multiple needs. Uh, we like to think of uh, ourselves as your project management one-stop shop. So that means you're going to find specialized departments uh, in our company. We have a consulting department training with a variety of ways to consume that training. And we also develop tools and write books. So we really try and attack <laughs> at all uh, si stages of your project life cycle, um, arming you with resources that are going to fit uh, and meet your needs. So just a quick note about today's session. For those of you who have been joining us throughout our weekly series of Webinar Wednesday, today uh, we have, we're have we de debuting our new format. Instead of an hour together, we're going to have a short half hour. But we're also going to find that this is a targeted and streamlined approach to what we're going to cover. We'd love to hear your thoughts, see if this is working for you or if it's not, or if you have a different suggestion. So please feel free to reach out. Because we've trimmed down the time, it means that we might not have as much time for questions. However, that does not mean that we would like you to withhold them. Please still utilize that question section on the control panel. We're going to do our best to either cover them during the time together or uh, we will follow up shortly afterwards with an answer for you. Okay, with that, it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Jean Lieberman, who is our project, a senior project advisor here at Advisacon. All right, Anna, thank you very much. And um, thank you all for attending. Um, I, this is just a little slide about me, not, not too important, um, but one thing is my a lot of my experience has been in pharmaceutical R&D, and so I've done instead of the typical software IT sort of project management, managing clinical studies and things like that using these same tools that we're going to talk about, um, and also a picture of me because I'm not quite brave enough to put the video camera on yet and do this live, but uh, in any case. We're going to talk today about reverse engineering, and um, so what does that mean? Because uh, as a term, it's not one I, I've had heard before, um, it, typically. I, I've heard things about scheduling from the finish date, but really, uh, reverse engineering is really um, a good term for describing this. So typically, we think of like a software development plan. And let me sort of flip over for a second. So if I bring up one of the, just the template for Microsoft Project, and this is a really nice template. It has a lot of richness to it. This is Microsoft where they've improved their reporting. And you can see this nice chart in, in the um, top here, but I'm gonna get rid of that. And if you look, here, this, this shows sort of a typical waterfall approach. We're going to do this task, then we're going to do this task, then we're going to do this task, and that's how we figure things out. We're going to start here with the scope, we're going to end with the um, rollout and all the things that go on in between, and we're doing that and using Microsoft Project to do that using the predecessor. Uh, column and just just for clarity, predecessor is a way of linking tasks together. So that's what's very key about Microsoft Project. You can do all this stuff in Excel, but using Microsoft Project, you get to use their scheduling engine. And so you you say, I want these two tasks to be related, and you do by that by using the predecessor. A predecessor is a task that happens first. The successor is the, the following task. And most of the time, we think of it as a finish to start relationship. When this task ends, 
this task will begin. And that's what you see here with these two tasks. And the next one uh, begins when the one before it ends. So it's that's how we think about it. But today we're going to think and talk about things a little bit differently. Talking about things in reverse reverse engineering. And if I come back here, um, we're, we're going to talk about it in a couple of different ways. Reverse engineering is, here's the situation. So instead of saying, go out and develop the system, tell me how long it's going to take and all that, they come to you and say, hey, we got a pot of money and we want you to go develop this, but it has to be done before the end of the fiscal year. So you're given this end date. And it puts you into a different situation because what's critical is you can't miss that end date. Um, another situation is like, all right, um, if I'm going to watch the groundhog on Groundhog's Day, punch Tawny Phil, and I have to plan to have him there for Groundhog's Day, then I have to make sure it happens on Groundhog's Day. It can't happen the day after. So I have to plan knowing that end date. And so that's what we're referring to is scheduling from the end backwards. And it's, it's really sort of different. And there's ways, a couple of ways I'm going to show you about how to do that and how to do it and then manage your project because that's really um, what you need to do once you set it up. Lots of people you know, plan their projects. It's the managing of it later that often people don't do. So. And, that, and now I'm done with my PowerPoint slides. So let me flip over and we're going to do this in project. And um, the, the example that I've picked to do this with is a wedding. So I've set up in Excel just the thing of I want to have a, a wedding. And if I want to have a wedding, then I'm going to have to do all these other tasks. Obviously, there are many other tasks one would have to do, but I've just limited it to 10. So all these things have to happen to get to my wedding day, and I know that I want to get married on the last day in June, so I have a June wedding. So if that's the case, what do I do, and how far back do I have to propose in order to make that happen? Now, just like any project, I've sort of um, brainstormed what my tasks are, and I've made a rough guess on duration of the tasks. And so now I'm going to go into project and just start with a blank project. Now, one thing you'll see here is new tasks are created in auto schedule mode. You always have this little choice here of for a given project, which way to do it. And not to belabor the point, but you want things in auto-scheduled mode because um, you want to use the scheduling engine. That's the key thing here. So we're in a situation where we know the end date. That's what we know to begin with. So if I go ahead and I put in my end date, and I'm just using copy-paste to make it easier for myself. So I put it in, and you'll notice that the start date is today because by default, without doing anything, projects plan from today's date. But I don't want today's date. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change this to the date that I want. So I want to get married on June 30th. All right, so let's see. Now, I want that to show up in the Gantt chart, but let me do a couple things. I'm going to hide this column, and notice it's not delete column, it's hide because um, project actually has a ton of data that exists be beyond what you see. It's a, it's a database, a tracking database beyond. And so just to show, there are all these fields related to tasks and projects that I can pull up and look at. And so I can just hide things like task mode is that manual versus scheduled. It's not flipping on there very long. I don't need that because I've already thought about it and I've already changed it to be auto scheduled. So I'm going to get rid of this. So I'm going to hide it. So I'm just getting my, my uh, 
situation, my, my display here set up, very important is the predecessor that's going to link things. So I typed in this date and you'll notice I have a little icon here that says I have a constraint. And you know, it's the constraint I want. I want this wedding to be June 30th. All right, so if the, that, that's going to happen, then let me go, what's, what is the, whoops, sorry. What is the task right before the wedding? Well, it's the wedding rehearsal. So I grab that and I come in and I put it as the next task. And I put it here and, and well, it got the start date of, you know, today's date because that's what it is by default unless you link things. And I can see this if I do a zoom on the entire project. Here's my end date. Here's this task right here. Well, that's not what I want. I want this to be right before the wedding day. So let's see, I can link those. That's what we do. Linking says make a connection between them. And it says, now this is, has to happen right um, related to the wedding day. But the link I put in there, and you'll notice here, now I actually have my rehearsal showing up after the wedding. Well, that's not very good. Um, I actually want this rehearsal party for five days. And I thought, five days is good for a rehearsal party. I want that to be ahead of the wedding. So what do I got to do? So one thing I can do, so you'll notice there's this little line here that shows the link between the two tasks. So if I double click on that, it brings up the task dependency window. And you'll see by default, it's got a finish to start relationship. You can have four different relationships between tasks, between what's called the predecessor and the successor task. So in this case, finish to start says when the predecessor task, so task one, the wedding day, when it finishes, the next task, wedding rehearsal, starts. Well, that's how we normally think of things. When this ends, this one starts, this ends. That's how we sort of do things normally. But in this case, we don't want that. Start to start means they both start at the same time. Finish to finish means they both finish at the same time. Well, neither of those apply. So we have this fourth one, which is really rarely used. And it's start to finish. And when I put that in, so if you think about it, start to finish, the predecessor task starts um, when the other one, look, no, I got to get it right. Start to finish. Let me go ahead and put it in and we'll see what happens. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Zoom in. And I added one by mistake. So let's go. So now, so now I see this start to finish. So when this, the predecessor task, which is wedding day, starts, dictates when the successor task, the wedding rehearsal, finishes. So it puts it into the past, not the future. And that's what I'm wanting. So let's see, if I add in the next task, let me go here and I say, okay, before I can have the rehearsal, I got to get the license. So I add that in. And again, you'll notice it right away went to the um, today's date. Don't want that. So I can link these two together. So I do that link. Not the right link, because notice now this is in the future. I want it to be in the back. So I can come here and click on task information and go to the predecessor tab. So instead of having that finish to start, I can have that start to finish. And look what it happens. It puts it into, goes backwards into the past. This is starting to be like what I want to see. I'm hoping this is making sense to y'all. 
So let me do one more this way. So I got to get the RSVPs back from the invitations. So I put that in, and this time I'm just going to, I know this, uh, the predecessor is three, so I'm just going to type it in. And I do that, and there it is. This is great. This is just what I want. Now let me try something here just to check things. Let me zoom out a little bit. So, okay, so what's going to happen if that license takes ten takes more than the five days? So if it's going to be ten days, what happens? Ah, it pushes things backwards. It's holding my wedding day firm at June 30th. And that's what I want. This is reverse engineering. I am figuring out the schedule by going from the finish date down to the start date. And this, this is the way, this is how I want my schedule. However, one thing is it's sort of tedious doing this like this. I, I go ahead, I put that in, I have to change the links. It's not that bad, but it just is. And you can see and things are growing backwards. Now let's let's try, I'm going to start a new project and do this just a hair differently. So here I am, I, I want the same sort of outcome. Start from the end date, build to the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in my last day again. And now I have to find my project plan. Okay. All right, I put it in, same deal. But now, let's do something a little different. I, I'm going to go up to the project tab, and in project information, I get an option. Normally, we probably, most of us, leave this alone, which says schedule from the project start date. But this time, I'm going to change it, and I'm going to say schedule from the project finish date. So now things are going backwards. Now I want to put that finish date in there that I have, you know, that's that date. They said, finish that project by such and such a date. The money runs out, whatever. In my case, there's my finish date. And when I made that change up in the project information, it right away changed my task here, this last task, because it is now, um, it's using the scheduling engine. And when there is no predecessor, it schedules it from that finish date. So here that is. So I could start and do like I did before and put in the next, here, let me get rid of this, get rid of this, same sort of game, hide my columns. It's all about real estate. And so now I have this, but Things are not working right. It's going backwards. It's not, it's not what I want. So let me try something else. So if I delete this, okay, so here I am scheduling it from here. So instead of putting that next task here, what if I insert a row and I come over and I grab that task and so the thing right before the wedding day is the wedding rehearsal and I put it in and it's still not going right and all and I where is it I link them ah look my wedding day is on the right day and the red wedding rehearsal is backwards or, or you know showing it prior to the wedding day just what I wanted do it again. Insert. Get the license. Same thing. I'm going to link it. It's going backwards. Just, just what I want. Let me do one more this way. So let's see. If I get the RSVPs and I put it in here and do the link, and it's all working the way I want. Now what happens, let's see, 
the test I did before. So if the license does is going to take more than five days, it's going to take ten days. Ah, went backwards again. That's just what I want. So here I am doing the same thing I did in the first example, but this time I'm doing it, and to me it's a little more intuitive. I'm working backwards, I'm growing my plan, but eventually I'm going to have the whole thing looking the way that I normally think of it, from project start to project finish. So let me sort of cheat and go a little bit. Let me grab a little bit of this. Okay, so if I come over here and I stick in all the other tasks that I have here and get rid of these blanks, blank rows, and now I link all these together. And if I come over to view the entire project, it's all working. Now, the one thing, so I left my license being 10 days. I really want it as five days. That's what I think. And when I do that, my wedding day is June 30th. And it tells me, it shows me that in order to reach that wedding day with the, the estimates I have, I need to propose on New Year's Day. And I'm going to pick either during the Rose Bowl parade or during the game or after the game, depending who's won, because I live out here in LA. So by doing this reverse engineering of the schedule, I'm able to get the start date, and I know the finish date, and I get the planning, and it looks right, meaning intuitive to me as a project manager. And this, this gives me what I want, and now I know what to do to manage. Now, the last thing that I want to show, because we've got the planning done, but if, uh, for example, something expands or, um, let's see, if 30 days, so if you think about, okay, I'm going to start this in, on the first, and I start, and then I say, oh, this is going to take longer, well, it actually pushes my proposal back, and once I'm in the plan, I can't deal with it that way. It's not a good way to manage it. So at this point, I do another little trick, which is I go back to my project information, and instead of having that project finish date, schedule from project finish, I'm going to say schedule from project start date, and it picks up that start date from the project, and I say this, I mean, I, I say, okay, it looks the same, nothing has changed, but now if it takes me 25 days here instead of 20, it pushes out into the future. Now, that's good in one sense and not so good in the other, because now all of a sudden I have missed my wedding day, and it says, oh, if it's going to take you that long to do this, reserve the banquet, then you better plan to get married on the 7th, and we know that's not changing. So how do we deal with that? So let me reverse that back. So one thing people sort of typically do is they come in here and they say, this cannot move. This has to stay here. So instead of saying it's going to happen and be flow with the scheduling engine and the calculations, they say it must finish on this date, and they put a constraint, and it says, do you really want a constraint? And I say, okay. Now I see the little constraint calendar icon here. So let's go back here. So here we are, and if all of a sudden getting the license takes 20 days, and I do this, it, everything moves, let me make it 40 days, you'll notice my tasks all moving except the wedding. So if I were just sort of naively looking at this and I go, um, okay, everything's good. You know, I've made some changes, I've updated, but we're still going to hit the wedding day. But I, if I look at the picture, I know I'm not going to hit the wedding day. So 
that's not the best idea. I have another suggestion for you. So let me backtrack from this. And here I am with before I've put in that constraint. And instead of having constraint, what I can do, I bring up task information in the advance, I can set a deadline. And a deadline is not a hard constraint. It is a soft constraint, so to speak. So I say, I want a deadline on June 30th. I hit OK, and I don't know if you noticed, this had a little color change here, which is an icon indicative of a deadline. And I can change that in my bar styles if I wanted to. So what does this mean, though? So, you know, nothing sort of looks out of the ordinary. But now, if I, my license, getting the license, takes 20 days and it starts to push my end date out, I get a notification here that says, hey, you got a problem. And when I look here, I go, oh my gosh. It says that I, I'm not getting married till the 21st of July. I do have a problem. What am I going to do about this? I'm going to do something. I'm going to write the city. I'm going to do something and get this back in, in line. And when it's back in line, my alert goes away. It is a great way to avoid hard coding, because as soon as you hard code a project, it stops the dynamic aspects of the schedule. And that, as project managers, is what we really want, is to have the schedule be dynamic. All right, I got done <laughs> two minutes before the end. Um, Anna, are there Anna? Are there any questions? Not at this time, and I think that we'll All just right. move forward so we can end on time. Jean, thank you so much. This was uh, really intriguing and definitely helpful to see uh, the different ways of. Um, reverse engineering our schedules. So just a quick note, uh, we have a couple of options to keep the conversation going. If you would like to explore a Microsoft project, if this is a tool that's new to you, we'd love to set up a free trial and walk you through a demonstration. Also, there's a lot of changes coming with Project Online, so maybe you want to go ahead and take the opportunity to see uh, what new features and integrations are uh, present on the online version. We'd love to go ahead and uh, showcase that for you. Um, okay, also please check out our YouTube channel. Today's session is recorded and will be uploaded uh, on our YouTube channel for your future use. Um, with that, I think the last thing to cover is our PDUs. This session did qualify for a half PDU. The only thing you need to do to become eligible to claim that is to fill out the short survey that's going to appear as soon as I close out this webinar. Uh, just as a reminder, this program is constru constructed for you, and we'd love to go ahead and design each topic and uh, make sure we're doing everything we can to maximize the value uh, for you as it applies to your everyday job. So let us know how we're doing. Feel free to shoot us, shoot us an email or uh, pick up the phone, give us a call. Ah, one last thing. This, uh, this session, this topic on how to reverse engineer your schedule is also uploaded to our blog. So just want to go ahead and encourage you guys to check out advisacon.com, click on the blog section, and you'll see a step-by-step -step guide of how to do this as well. Okay, with that, I would like to thank you all again for your time and wish you the best as you finish out the rest of the week.